share my screen with you. And we'll go to this browser window. So uh, hopefully you all are doing OK this morning. Uh, once again, I'm Chad Boninger. I'm the business librarian uh, here at uh, Alden Library. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, using um, the guide I made for you. Uh, since um, August 26, you all have viewed the guide and used it 12,488 times, which is pretty awesome. So that tells me y'all been doing some pretty good work there. OK, so uh, so I applaud you for your your efforts and your in your project one. OK, so great, great work there. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is looking at uh, uh, stuff for project two that we did not address or I didn't address personally in, in our previous presentation for uh, for project one. And we're looking at um, four different resources today in, in our time together and uh, just kind of give you a a, a brief rundown of each of those uh, resources. OK, um, one of which is uh, we'll start off with here in our in our consumers and customers tab section is Simmons Insights. Now what Simmons gives you, it gives you a little more granular information than what you might find in Mintel or Passport or some of the other uh, uh, market research databases. OK, so uh, it's a great tool to really kind of get um, uh, consumer demographics for a particular product. Uh, or uh, for a particular attitude or people who engage in particular activity, that sort of thing. OK, so um, let me launch uh, Simmons Insights here. I do want to cost you um, that uh, this one has like 50 simultaneous users. So if you can't get in, unfortunately, you'll have to get up earlier or stay up later, right, when you do your research. OK, this, so we, we kind of cap out at 50 simultaneous users. So over the next two or three weeks, it may be a little uh, sometimes occasionally difficult to, to log in. OK, so just bear that in mind. OK, now it, it first opens when you go uh, launch uh, um, Simmons. Uh, it goes to this page here. Now, I like to kind of start you out in a little more basic um, way of using this thing, and I actually start you under essentials and go to quick reports here. OK, so let's say for the sake of my presentation today with y'all uh, that I'm looking to to open a health food store. OK, so uh, so my first thing to, to look at is basically I want to know what consumer, you know, consumer information about people who, who shop at health food stores, right? And I can get some of the information from Mintel. Uh, there's reports in there in Mintel for, for health food stores, but there's also stuff in here. If I go and say, let's search for um, health food, right? We have, um, in this case, we're finding um, consumer attitudes about health food, right? Um, or maybe we want to say there's here's I eat healthier food. I like to buy healthier ingredients. Uh, if we go up here and say, well, let's look for natural food, right? Um, here's stuff on things like when shopping for food, I especially look for organic or natural foods. Agree a little, disagree a little. Uh, let's look for the people who agree a lot. Because if I want to open a um, a uh, health food store, organic food store, the, I may be wanting to look at the people who are really, really going to be my first consumers there. OK, so so let's look at that. I'm just going to click on that one. And uh, what you'll notice is we have a sample size. So what Simmons does is they survey people across the United States and ask them a bunch of questions about uh, different products and, and what they eat and you know, what they watch on TV, if they go to sports events, you know, all this kind of stuff and get demographic data for them. OK, so um, they do a six month survey and they also do a 12 month survey. OK, uh, the six month survey can be uh, the questions can be a little bit different uh, sometimes. But if you use the 12 month survey instead of looking at um, 1938 people who said, yes, I agree a lot to this statement. We can look at use the 12 month survey. Now we've got we double that. OK, and what I want to do in here is I want to look at a demographic profile of this consumer and this consumer is my target consumer that I'm after. OK, so I'm going to make that my target. And when I do that, it puts it down here for us and you'll notice that the arrow is active and I can click on run analysis here. OK. So this is going to give me a demographic profile of uh, people who say when shopping for food, I especially look for organic or natural foods. I agree a lot to that statement. OK, so if we look at this of the total sample size in the Simmons survey, which was twenty six thousand people, thirty seven hundred and seventeen of them said 
hey, I, I agree to this statement quite a bit, uh, a lot, right, which is 13.11% of that survey, okay? So weighted out, this is this is the weighted average with, with three zeros on it. So based upon this survey, this says that 31 million people in the U.S. agree a lot to that statement, or 13.11% of the population, okay? And if we scroll down here, here's where we see we get general statistics like household income, median age, their education level, right? Uh, their ethnicity, how much money they have, right? Uh, their age group, gender breakdown, the right-hand corner, uh, that sort of thing. So, um, so it looks like we're, we're after a, a largely female market, right? Uh, highly educated, right? With, um, you know, a substantial amount of household income, right? So, um, and it looks like more than a third of them have children in the household. Okay, so there's one way that you can do that, right? And we could do this. We could we could do a demographic profile like this, and then compare it to people who shop at Whole Foods, and just do the same sort of thing, right? So we could go in and 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 do that sort of thing, right? Um, the other way you can use this is you can create a cross tab. Okay, now I'm going to go back and change this to our 12 month study again. All right, and let's do our natural food okay and let's see we're going to say agree um let's see here agree a lot when shopping for food i especially look for organic or natural foods we're going to say agree a lot and what i'm going to do in here is make a table okay and so i'm going to use this as my column i'm going to use my 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 this particular data point as my column okay all right, we do that. It goes down the columns down here on the left hand side. OK, right down here. Now, what I want to do now is is maybe in my area, there's not really any health food stores that I'm looking at maybe, but there are there are Kroger's, right? So if we go and look for Kroger, we can say let's look at Kroger, right? And we're going to use that as our row because we're going to compare uh people who sh who say they they buy organic food to people who shop at kroger right we can do the same sort of thing with uh, walmart and we're gonna have to do walmart and then do uh food here i believe right so um let's do walmart and there we go walmart super center for food stores that's what we want so people who shopped at walmart one to three times in the last four weeks OK, um, just kind of a side point, I was doing four to nine times, but my sample size got too small. Right. Uh, which is kind of funny because, you know, uh, I have I have four sons. So my wife and I actually go to the grocery store, you know, at least twice a week. Right. So for me, one to three times is not a whole lot of times to go to the grocery store. But according to the data, most people don't go four to nine times in, in a period of four weeks. Most people are doing this particular behavior here. OK, so we're going to use that as our rows as well. All right. And we're going to compare that to um, Whole Foods. So let's say uh, our store is going to be like Whole Foods. OK, that's kind of our um, that's kind of our benchmark. OK, so we're going to we're going to use that to our rows as well. All right. Now, once we're satisfied with that, we can keep kind of keep doing this till our hearts content and build a big old table. But I'm just going to leave it like that for the time being. And now we can click on run. And what this will do is it'll go in and do uh, this sort of cross tabulation here for you. OK, now this is the total sample right here. So this is everybody who filled out the survey. So it's not cross tab with anything. OK, so uh, so basically if you start here at the vertical, right? If we start with a vertical, we're going to read it from the top down of the total population. 6.7 percent shopped at Kroger one to three times in the last four weeks. OK, of the total population doing vertical again, almost 30% of the total population shopped at Walmart in the last uh, four weeks, right? And same thing, of the total population, 3.8% shopped at Whole Foods, okay? Now, if we go over here and do this, we can, let's, if we do it by the same token over here, of the people who said they agree a lot that I buy organic or natural foods whenever I can, right? 5.8% uh, of them, shopped at Kroger in the last four weeks, one to three times. 26.8% of them shopped at Walmart in the last three to uh, four weeks. 9.4% of them shopped at Whole Foods, okay? Now we would assume that Whole Foods would be higher because they have nat nat more natural and organic food selection and that sort of thing, right? 
But we're looking at Walmart. You're like, wow, a lot of people shop at Walmart who buy organic foods. Well, that's probably because a third of the total U.S. population already shops at Walmart, right? So we're probably better off reading this from the other direction using the horizontal. So if we use the horizontal over here, we can say of those people who shopped at Walmart, 11.7% of them uh, especially look for a natural organic food, right? So that's not really, you know, that's not really that big a, a deal there, right? So uh, considering that 13.1% of the total population looks for organic food. So actually uh, the people who shop at Kroger and, and Walmart are actually lower than the, the total population. Of the total population, 13.1% of them look for organic food, right? But if we look at Whole Foods, of people who shop at Whole Foods, 32.3% of them look for natural organic food every chance they get, right? And that's why we have this nice little green arrow here that indicates this index that these people are 146 times more likely to look for organic food, right? So that's that's kind of how you read that, right? So it's, you can do all this kind of stuff and all these kind of cross tabulations with, with this kind of data, okay? All right, so that is Simmons. Um, I do want to say you can actually go over here. Once you create a report, uh, you can export it as an Excel file. And um, what you'll get, and my Excel is a, is a sl touch slow to open. I've got a bunch of other kind of business add-ins that make it a little sluggish. Um, what you'll get is basically this report with, uh, with some data in it and uh, some additional tabs to look at too. So here's our, uh, here's our data. I'll blow it up for you so you can see it a little bit. And then we get additional tabs across the bottom that will get a little more granular in there, okay, as you, as you look at it. So it's a really kind of a cool, cool way to kind of break up your data. And, and here we've broken it up. Uh, they've done the work for us ahead of time to kind of go in and say, here's, here's different ways that you can kind of really look at um, people across the, across the spectrum there, okay. All right, so that is uh, Simmons Insights there. Um, I do want to show you, I know I flew through that. I have a whole huge guide right up under here, my tips and tricks guide. So this will take this here will take you how to create a demographic profile. This here will take you how to create a, a, a uh, cross tab. And within that guide, I've got a video tutorial basically showing you what I just did. And here's all the sections of this and how to read a cross tab and all that kind of stuff. And then I've got basically step by steps, right, of, of how to go through and, and do what I just did for you. So you'll have some guidance there uh, to kind of uh, do some do some initial uh, uh, investigation there before you before you reach out with questions. Okay. All right. So again, that's Simmons Insights under the Consumers and Customers tab on my on my supermarket guide. All right. So the next one we'll look at here is um, is a database called Simply Analytics. Okay. Um, now what this will do is um, we can use similar kind of Simmons like data uh, down to a um, a local level. OK, so as you're kind of identifying either a place where you want to open a brick and mortar store or maybe a place where you want to uh, target um, a particular market for advertising for your for your web application or your, you know, your 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 grocery stores app or service or whatever. Right. OK, um, you'll notice right here that it's it's I'm going to sign in with my account. You can create an account here. The nice thing about signing an account is that. Um, Wow, that's interesting. I don't no idea why it's got a library card number there. That's bizarre. Um, we don't need that. <laughs> um, the um, what you will do is basically create an account right here, and it'll remember what you worked on last time. You can also sign in as a guest, but the next time you log in, it won't remember what you were using. Okay, so I'm going to sign in here and um, make a quick note to Simply Analytics uh, library card thing because that's not supposed to be there. All right. So last time I was doing something, I was in here. I was doing something with Chattanooga and Nashville and and places like that. Um, so you can see I've, I've already got some data in here. I'm going to start over from a new project, just like if you've never used this before. Okay. Simply Analytics is location based. So when you start over, when you start log in, you're basically going to say, well, let's look at uh, Columbus. Um, here we'll do Columbus, Ohio. We can do we can do a zip code, right? So we can do Athens, Ohio zip code. We can do uh, Portland, uh, Oregon, right? We can do uh, 
let's do uh, County. Whoops. There's Hamilton County, Tennessee. That's where Chattanooga, my, my hometown is, right? So, so we can kind of go in and compare different places in here like this, okay? We can do a whole state. Let's just do Ohio as a state. And then we do next, okay? Um, there's a lot of complexities within Simply Analytics. Sometimes it's not quite so simply. Um, so in order to kind of remedy that, the, the database wants to provide you with some what they call seed variables to kind of get you started here. And I typically always check uh, population. I'm always interested in like, you know, how wealthy the population is. Um, and then I will occasionally do number of households. And then I often don't really care about how old the housing is, but maybe I do care about, you know, how old the, the population is. Okay. So we do that. Um, you can also create your project without seed variables, but it's kind of nice to have this built in already. So we create our project and what it'll do is it'll actually go in and it'll start looking at, um, a map first, okay? And I actually prefer to go over uh, and look at the quick report first, okay? So the quick report, um, let's say we were trying to look at four or five different locations for, um, uh, for our possibilities of where we're gonna open our, our store or where we're gonna uh, target our market, marketing efforts for our, our, our app or service, right? Uh, so this gives us basic kind of census-like data uh, for these areas. And so the nice thing about this is you can you can go over here and you can export this as Excel file um, if you just wanted just this report. Uh, I like to use this and you can ex export it right there. I like to use this to kind of go down and say, well, you know, let's look at, um, oh, well, here's an easy way to get people who are 18 to 24 and 25 to 34. I'm adding these variables to my project, okay? Um, if I scroll down, let's see, um, let's look at, uh, we want to see maybe wealthier people, right? So we um, maybe we say let's do two hundred thousand dollars and over, right? Because or a hundred thousand dollars and over, because those are people who may be more inclined to to buy organic foods, right? And then we want people who have uh, are a little bit higher educated, at least they've got a bachelor's degree, okay? And then here's language is spoken, that kind of stuff, okay? Um, so this is a kind of a nice way to kind of go over here, and once we get to our comparison table. Um, you'll notice that the seed variables were there, right? And so now we can actually go up here under view and edit our view and click on the other things that we want. And maybe we don't really care about this, right? And, um, you know, we can, we can basically go in and select which ones we want to look at our report there, okay? And once we do that, we click done and it puts it into the list for us. <clears throat> So, um, so this is kind of a nice way to do this. You can also go over and use the data search on the left-hand side over here. And if we search for uh, organic uh, food and do a search here, here we have percent of people who agree a lot that they shop for, for organic food, right? That looks familiar, right? Because we just saw it just a few minutes ago in Simmons. So if we do that and do the percent and we do the number, Right. This is a way that we can go in and we can also go and say, let's look for people who shop at um, Whole Foods. And let's see. Uh, uh oh, there we go. Number of times shopping to the very bottom. So percent of people who shopped at um, Whole Foods, right? And number of shopped at Whole Foods in the last four weeks, right? So if we do that, uh, so now we have a big list here that we can use to kind of compare, okay? It's zero in Athens, Ohio, because there's not a Whole Foods in Athens, Ohio, right? Even though I know some colleagues probably go to Columbus, right? And, or, or friends go to Columbus and shop at Whole Foods because it's a database and they can, they kind of rely on absolutes, right? There's no Whole Foods here, so they make that zero, okay? So this is a nice way you can kind of use this to compare, okay? We can then go over and look at a ranking if we want to. And we can say, let's look at, right now we're looking at zip codes in Columbus, Ohio. Let's look at the state of Ohio. And maybe we want to say, let's look at um, uh, counties or cities in Ohio. Let's do cities in Ohio. And let's look at um, 
You'll notice that our, our um, whole foods or organic foods not here, so we can go here and edit our view. All right, and maybe want to say agree a lot, number who agree a lot. All right, so now we can say sorted by number of people who agree a lot uh, that they like to eat organic food. OK, so here we have Columbus, Cleveland. You know, naturally, those are going to be the, the largest uh, percentage because they're larger populations. So that's where we might want to add the percentage as well. OK, all right. So once we use these kind of things to kind of identify where we might want to, to locate our store, we can then go over here and use a map. OK, and uh, so let's say we're looking at just the state of Ohio. And all right. So we're looking at the state of Ohio. Right now it's looking at by population. We can go over here and change this to percent who agree a lot that they shop for local organic food. Okay. All right, so now we have this nice red looking state. I don't really like that because it doesn't really tell me that red does not scream like organic to me, right? It screams like, you know, angry organic, I guess. Right, so if we go over here and click on edit, uh, we can change the colors here. So if we want to go in and say, well, the green's a little more peaceful, you know, or maybe this little kind of greenish bluish combination is kind of nice, right? And if you wanted to, you can actually go in and click on the individual color cells and alter some of the color cells. So maybe we wanted, we wanted to go with a light gray, you know, instead, right? You know, or you can kind of, if you're not careful, you can make something that looks pretty nasty. So be careful about that. Um, you can also mess around with what they call the classification method here. So, so this is a nice way to kind of go in and, and just all you're doing when you click on these is you're changing the ranges down here. And so when you change the ranges down here, sometimes it makes your map look a little bit prettier uh, because it, it kind of gives you a little more contrast. So I think that's kind of neat. So you can kind of mess around with that. Um, so here we see, you know, uh, percentage of people who agree a lot that they shop for natural food stores or shop for natural food whenever the chance they get in Ohio. Now, what I can do with that, and this is this is a kind of a nice little map here, right? Uh, what I can do with this is uh, I can actually go over here and use the businesses section, and I'm going to use the advanced search here, and I'm going to search by SIC code. You can kind of mess around with this a little bit, and I'm going to go in and say let's look for health food and here is health foods okay and we can go in and now search for businesses who are classified in health foods across the state of ohio right and so we can go in and click on some of these uh and so here's mother brown's natural remedies uh in napoleon ohio right uh there's 13 stores there looks like in columbus uh, here's one down here, uh, Sweet Meadows Limited, right? So this gives you an idea of like where some of my potential competitors are uh, by location on the map by a uh, percentage of, of need, right? People who say I buy those things, maybe there's not a store in that area, so maybe we want to kind of open a store in that, in that area, okay? So now because we did those businesses here, we also get a nice list that we can now download here. Uh, right now we're just looking at Columbus, Here's our state. We can download this list of competitors there as well. OK, so those are some different ways that you can use uh, Simply Analytics. OK, uh, back to our map. A uh, pretty popular thing uh, folks like to do is uh, they like to go in and uh, use the export feature here. And you can actually go in and make your own kind of image with with the application here. So you can you can go in and crop it. You know, so if you're just looking at Ohio, right? Um, you know, and continue the layout. You can actually go in and, and change the colors of, of this thing. You can move it around, right? So you can kind of create this, this nice little image that you can export to, to your, your PowerPoint presentations. It's a great way to kind of visually represent where your competitors uh, or, or the need might be in your, in your local market. All right, so that is Simply Analytics. I know that's kind of fast there. I also want to show you that last week I put together uh, in a similar fashion to the Simmons guide, I now have a Simply Analytics tips and tricks guide as well. So here's like, for example, create a visual map. You know, this will kind of take you through. I don't have the screenshots yet because that takes a little more time, but I've got for each one of these sections, I've got about a three to five minute video 
um, that will kind of walk you through uh, how to do the quick reports. And if you basically start here and kind of walk all the way down, it'll do exactly just what I showed you uh, today, you know, and it kind of builds upon each other in a, in a sequential format. Okay. All right. So that's, uh, that's uh, simply analytics. All right. So uh, if I could see you, this is where I would ask you if you're doing okay. And hopefully you're all nodding yes. And you're all like, happy and, and and glad to be here so i've got about 15 minutes left so we're going to kind of fly through uh back to local market from demand um i want to show you a, a database called mergent Intellect now and um this is really nice because this kind of builds on the businesses concept in simply analytics okay um so if you know the name of a business you can go up here and type in the company name and just get that company okay um, Sorry, I've been fighting a sneeze since we just started. Um, the um, So if you know the name of a company, you can go up here and search for the company and get company information right there. What I want to do is use uh, the advanced search in here uh, to go in and basically identify companies by industry. And this is usually how I do this. All right. And you'll notice this SIC code that kind of looks, looks similar to what we saw in um, – Simply analytics. You could also use the NAICS code, which is a different way of classifying industries, kind of like by like a library call number or kind of by location. Um, so what we'll do is you'll see there's a wholesale and retail trade. Let's just kind of go and drill down this thing. There's food stores. Cool. Uh, let's see. Here's grocery stores. Mm, I don't think I've seen anything in there. Let's see. I don't think health foods is under any of those. Let's look under miscellaneous food stores. And here's health and dietetic food stores. We we'll keep on drilling down. And you can see as we keep drilling down, it gets more and more granular, right? And so finally, here's health food stores. All right. So we click on that and we click add to criteria. And so down here in the bottom, it says it finds 7,764 companies found in the database. Okay. Uh, we're going to click search. And um, this is going to give us all the ones that are classified across the US. Okay. Uh, so it kind of gives you a way of looking at uh, some of the larger companies in the industry, that sort of thing. They're going to be sorted by sales. In many cases, this, this is estimated sales because a lot of these companies are privately held. So it's estimated sales. Um, so let's go back to our advanced search. And let's say we, we just want to locate those companies in Franklin County, uh, Ohio. OK, so we go to location. We go to Ohio. Let's go. Uh, we're going to say county. We're going to do Ohio here. And then now we got to scroll down and find Franklin County. There's Franklin. All right. And once again, we add that to our criteria. All right. So this finds 22 companies that are classified according to Mergent Intellect as health food stores in Franklin County, Ohio. OK, uh, so we're going to go and do do that kind of search. All right. So this gives us a list of 22 companies here, and we can go in and click on the individual companies and find information individually about those companies, okay? Um, we could also go, and um, what I like about this database is that we can go in and select all of the companies up to about 2,000 companies or so. We can select all of our companies here, and then we can go in and do this build file section, okay? All right. So this gives us a format. I'm actually going to choose my own fields here because otherwise we get all this stuff and it's a little bit overwhelming. So I'm just going to do company name and I like to know year of founding, how long they've been in business. I think that's pretty cool to know, right? Um, we can get, um, you know, you can go and say, let's look at company location. Let's look at their uh, physical city, physical zip code, physical address, right? And maybe you just want sales and then maybe how many employees they have, okay? Uh, most of this financial information won't be available for these smaller private companies, so I usually don't mess with that stuff down there, okay? But you could go down and say, let's get the, uh, you know, contact information of the executive, you know, maybe the owner, right? And we'll call this uh, Chad Grocery down here. Once we're satisfied with that, we'll build our file. And, uh, Let's hope the internet cooperates here. All right, we will download our file. You can also email it to yourself. And once again, we have another spreadsheet. 
that gives us those list of companies, you know, with the year of founding, right? Uh, physical address, city, zip code, sales, uh, um, that kind of stuff. And then we have, here's the, the executive information uh, for those people as well. So, so pretty cool, uh, pretty cool way of uh, getting, you know, competitor information um, uh, in, in, your, in your local market or to see what other companies are out there doing, doing the kind of business you want to do. Okay. All right. 10 minutes left. We're going to look at, um, um, I don't have a, a specific guide for that one yet. I'm working on it. So uh, maybe sometime over summer by the time I get to that one. Um, the last one I'll show you today is, uh, is BizMiner. And um, so BizMiner is, is pretty good for, uh, for a variety of purposes, okay? Uh, and um, you can go in here and type in organic food and you might not get anything, okay? Uh, let's try it, just, just for giggles here. Let's do organic food. Um, and let's see. All right, so we get organic food stores. We have 948 establishments, which is kind of small for the whole US. Uh, so they're kind of a little bit smaller there, but I do see that here we have National Organic Foods Wholesale. We have organic food stores in the retail trade, and that's under 4.4, okay? So what I might do is let's say, let's go under this 4.4.4.5 down here, all right? And uh, here is health and beverage stores, food and beverage stores, excuse me. But I noticed that that number was a 446. Let's go under health and food care store, health and personal care store, excuse me. All right. And so here's our, where we have the health food supplement stores. Let's see. And so here we have diet food, health food stores, organic foods. So let's use this one right here. Now, before I was actually looking in the 445 section, which is the food stores in which grocery stores are in, but I wasn't finding anything there. Okay. I found all kinds of specialty food stores, but those are mostly like international foods and that kind of stuff. Uh, so fortunately, they have this section here as well. And so let's look at just health food stores. And I'm going to click show reports. And uh, we're going to start by looking at a industry market report. So let's select a market area. And you can do a county market. You can you can do a radius. So up to a hundred mile radius of your of your like your street address of where you think about opening your business. Right. Um, <clears throat> all kinds of different ways to do that. I'm just going to do. Uh, um, let's do Columbus, Ohio again. And so here's Columbus. They give us 30 operations and we will access now here. This is often a little bit difficult to demo because sometimes BizMiner can be a little, a little sluggish. Um, all right, I'm going to look at the HTML version here. Uh, reason being is because it gives you this kind of, uh, yes, I agree. Uh, gives you this kind of uh, interactive kind of map and stuff uh, that you don't necessarily get in your PDF or your or your um, your uh, Excel version. Okay, so for example, if we go over here and click on map, uh, this gives us. Um, you know, you'll notice that they put things like Smoothie King in the health food stores area. Okay, so sometimes databases are going to classify things in different ways. Okay, so we might want to go back over and look at the specialty food store section. Uh, in BizMiner to see if that gives us stuff that's more comparable to what we found in Merge and Intellect. Okay, so you, you, they can kind of do different, they look at industries in sometimes different ways. Okay, there's not necessarily a, a, a standard way of doing that. Okay, so this isn't too bad. We look at Garden Herb Shop and you can kind of see that it gives you a sales bracket. Uh, Merge and Intellect will give you more of a closer, you know, actual sales, right? But it's still going to be estimated because typically these are um, private companies. Uh, we have a, a market, so we see how many startups there were in each area and how much market volume that they were that that they generated in those uh, times in those in those years, right? Annual sales across the uh, overall industry, you can see it's still um, it's growing uh, 8.29 percent since 2016, right? Uh, startups are going down, so it looks like sometimes uh, the startup market has not been great there. Uh, cessation will tell you more about that as far as how many firms um, 
uh, went out of business, right, or relocated, okay? Um, so you get all kinds of stuff in here that can be useful for kind of looking at your local market, okay? I'm going to go back a couple of screens here in, um, in here. And uh, one thing we can look at too, we can say, well, let's look at, go back and look at these local industry financial reports and let's look at um, uh, Columbus here. And what it'll do is we'll go in, once we select our city or our location, it's going to go in and pull up basically your sales classification. Okay. So because we don't want to com be comparing our health food stores to like all of the smoothie kings across the United States, right? Um, so, so this will give us a sales class. So if we say, well, we're looking at, uh, um, let's look at small nine firms, right? And that make less than uh, $5 million. Uh, so we'll do that. And then we will access now. All right, and this gives us uh, different formats as well. We'll look at the HTML version here um, while this is loading. And this is a, a place where you can go in and look. Um, so this gives us basically, you know, stuff like cost of sales, right? Um, you know, uh, you get your balance sheet, you know, different places where you can find, you know, how much they're, they're spending on, um, you know, insurance and that kind of stuff. And that's actually, um, that's actually the micro profit and loss statement, but um, you kind of go in and see, oh, well, here we go. Here's, um, you know, all kinds of stuff you can go in and see, you know, uh, you can put in your own inputs as well. Right. Um, so, uh, here's how much they're spending on advertising versus salary and wages versus rent. And these are averages for in the, or companies in that sales bracket, <clears throat> excuse me, in Columbus, Ohio, who are in your industry. Right. So it's a great way to kind of say, you know, this is what we're going to be spending. This is, this is so you so you understand like your reality, how much stuff is going to cost, how much labor is going to cost, that sort of thing in your area. Okay. All right. So those are the those are the two main reports in there. You can get um, this competitive market analyzer will give you um, a, a similar kind of report that we found we saw in the first one there. And it what it'll do it'll um, too far down here. Here's Columbus. Um, it basically tells you, you know, kind of if you're not a if you're not a, you know, looking at the numbers and being able to interpret that yourself, uh, it kind of walks you through these numbers in a um, kind of a, a pretty logical process. OK, so uh, it, it gives you good information, you know, it gives you starts off with just local market information as well, things like that. Uh, so here it says in this market, health food stores industry is 29 competitors, 19 independent firms, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, um, annual industry site sales are 572,000. Median site sales are 467,000. You know, by contrast, U.S. average industry site sales are this amount versus this amount, right? Um, so it kind of uses this to kind of compare the local market to the health of the overall national market, right? So it's a kind of a great way to kind of look at that to see if it's worthwhile opening a new store uh, in that area, right? So, um, so things like that. So it's a great way to kind of you know go in and 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 compare this to the kind of the the national market. Okay. All right. So that is Bizminer. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, as always, uh, I'm happy to help with with your research going forward. Hopefully this this session here is has been helpful to you. It is going to be recorded, and I will put it down here in the in the uh, research session recordings. Uh, so it'll be here with the with the other one. Um, What's kind of interesting is that the, the previous one had been uh, uh, has been viewed over 100 times. So evidently somebody's been looking at it. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can also use the get help for, with Chad to uh, make an appointment, that sort of thing. Uh, this week is terrible because I'm actually leaving town tomorrow and I'll be back late Thursday night and then uh, catching up on Friday. So probably next week is probably going to be uh, more viable options for uh, getting sort of research help if you need it. Okay, so uh, I will try to respond to emails this week, but I'm actually at a conference, and and um, so it'll be a little little challenging to to kind of address uh, things. And and some of the questions that you you ask for help with Simmons and that kind of stuff can be often quite challenging. To try to to answer via via writing, right? So they're just the, the questions don't really really lend themselves too easy to to try to explain how to do that via an email. Okay. All right, so uh, so that's all I have. Hopefully, this was helpful to you. 
and hopefully uh, you're finding my guide useful. I do want to tell you that um, probably once P2 is over, I do want to send out a survey uh, that I'll probably do via Basecamp uh, to ask for your feedback about these sessions and about uh, this guide in particular uh, so, uh, so I can make uh, things better for uh, the students uh, next semester in the, in, the, in the effort to continuously improve uh, my content and teaching. Okay, so that's all I have. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful. I am going to stop sharing my screen now and I will turn it back over to um, your, your faculty in your session. And I'm going to stop recording uh, now. <laughs>